well as uh, the demand continues to remain in a state of funk in places like Europe and also in Japan. US and UK are the only two exceptions uh, in so far as global growth is concerned uh, among the developing economies. All the other commodity exporting economies right from the Western Hemisphere, Brazil, Argentina, coming to South Africa, Russia, Turkey, uh, Indonesia, their aggregate demand problem has only gotten worse because of the sharp caving in of commodity prices and hence they are firmly ensconced in what are called or what were called fragile five and we have moved out of that comfortably because of improvement in stability in the, uh, on the external side the macroeconomic imbalance is being addressed with finesse by the RBI governor and also the government's commitment to confine uh, the fiscal deficit to 4.1% of GDP although that can be debatable whether we need to crowd in private sector investment to kickstart the moribund investment cycle because of inability of the private sector which is highly leveraged as well as the banking system which is saddled with around 12% of bad debts plus restructured assets. Uh, so I think but all, all the same the government has an appreciable job in terms of confining the fiscal deficit to 4.1% or commitment to confine to 4.1%. Uh, that is why we are seeing a torrent of capital coming into India. Uh, we are also on the cusp of the long awaited interest rate cut. In my opinion sometime after March uh, when the governor satisfies himself that the uh, government is confining itself to 4.1% of GDP and the base effect wears off in the month of January and February uh, for the inflation front. We are modeling in at least 75 to 100 basis point cut in interest rates over 12 month period from the first time the interest rate starts coming down. Inflation has been tamed and we believe that uh, uh, the macroeconomic factors couldn't be better for, uh, 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 for sort of the growth to pick up significantly as we move forward in FY16 and certainly in FY17. And hence capital allocation done when we talk to our clients overseas, what we essentially understand is that the problems bedeviling all the other major economies with the exception of America and England are leading to massive capital flows in uh, or would, lead, uh, would continue to see massive capital flows coming into India and the government is also making efforts in opening up more and more sectors for foreign investment to attract more uh, uh, sticky FDI capital flows. For instance, insurance, roughly 50,000 crores could be expected once just, just I think uh, the ordinance there, has been uh, cleared. On that point that you made about 4.1% fiscal deficit, you're saying the government will stick to it when the numbers come out? Yeah. In my opinion, I think uh, uh, in, F, in, in the current financial year, the government would stick to it. However, the medium term fiscal consolidation plan of uh, bringing it down to 3.7% next year and 3% a year after that, one could possibly see some uh, 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 relaxation that the government might seek. Uh, and uh, for fixing possibly the, new budget, the new budget will not have a fiscal deficit number below 4%. Can I put it that way? It might be the same. Uh, uh, it may be actually uh, a couple of basis points higher. Uh, it possibly could also be same, but what's important, Prashant, to focus on is the government should needs to give an ironclad commitment that that increase in fiscal deficit, say from 3.7, which is currently what the government is aiming for for next financial year, if it were to go to 4.1 and remain flat vis a vis the current financial year's deficit, that additional amount will solely be used for capital investments to build more roads because as we know that all the road companies are highly leveraged. So BOT projects there is not much interest. So again the government has to go the EPC way. The government will need money for that. Similar is the case in case of railways, airports, ports, power, mining. So I think in, if the government were to lay out a detailed roadmap about specific Mark V infrastructure projects that it would like to fund uh, 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 as public investment and then try to ensure that there is a cascading effect and a revival in cement demand, steel demand, construction companies getting more orders. So that uh, 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 seminal role the government if it were to play through allocating that amount uh, of 0.5% or 0.6% of GDP that will help uh, uh, sort of you know uh, uh, the revival in the investment cycle and that is what my belief is the government should do and hopefully would do. Yeah. Uh, all right, got that. So, what is the what is the way to play all, all of this? Uh, Ajay, let's get to that. Yeah. Uh, what so are I your think, you know, what are your top picks? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See, I think uh, uh, so. As I mentioned, there are two or three themes over the next twelve to eighteen months that investors should 
uh, 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 focus on and, uh, and construct a portfolio which is a combination of those. One, as I mentioned, we are clearly aiming at interest rates coming down uh, uh, and the economic revival to pick up. So cyclicals uh, uh, ought to form a part of a portfolio and also certain investment-led themes. So in investment-led themes, our bottom-up approach uh, indicates that last and tube row, uh, which basically gets orders from almost all the uh, process industries, be it refineries, steel mills, cement, uh, infrastructure sector, I think that is uh, uh, need, that should form, the, form, core, form part of the core portfolio. And then you can uh, also have some of the other smaller companies in the mid caps, companies like Cummins. Now Cummins is a play not only on a revival investment cycle in India, but they have large exports going to America, which is growing last quarter it grew at 5% and the growth is expected to, even if it tempers down a bit, it would be among the best performing developed markets. So Cummins comes in out there because of those two reasons. Uh, a company like uh, Crompton Greaves uh, can also be looked at uh, 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 for, from, uh, from a revival in industrial and power uh, sector uh, uh, demand accruing to it. And lastly, Ashoka Buildcon. A it would be a major beneficiary if there is a revival in the road sector. It's one of the uh, leading players, most efficient players in road sector and has sort of, you know, uh, some of its SPVs uh, where uh, uh, SBI Macquarie has taken a stake. Uh, so I think this is on the investment side. If you look at the cyclicals, I think autos, they have done well last year. They should continue to do well in our opinion, selectively over the next financial year. In the large cap space, we are advocating looking at Maruti Suzuki expecting a volumes to start reviving in second half of uh, next financial year as the interest rates start coming off and also Tata Motors because the CV cycle is in doldrums over last two, two or three years and Tata's are the largest player in the CV industry so as the MCV HCV uh, demand picks up due to improvement in mining particularly and also the other logistics sector I think Tata Motors should benefit also the JLR pie continues to do well so there will be an additional kicker if the domestic business starts looking up in the mid-cap space in auto sector, we are looking at Marut, uh, Mother Sun Sumi and Bharat Forge. Uh, Bharat Forge also because of in, uh, expected uh, investments coming in on the defense side, where they are well placed to uh, leverage any uh, large orders that could come from the defense sector on the forging side. Uh, Mother Sun Sumi continues to do well both on the uh, Indian front as well as in the uh, European front. If you look at uh, the other uh, theme that one could look at, it is uh, the improvement in demand in US and UK in particular. That could be played through some of the leading IT names. And our analyst is most positive on uh, uh, Infosys, Tech Mahindra in the large cap space, and KPIT technologies in the mid cap space along with Mindtree. So these are the four stocks that he has, uh, we are advocating investors to look at uh, as a basket in the IT space. Uh, of course, one can't forget banking the big daddy of them all and in banking our belief is that as the economy revives one needs now to shed one's inhibition and in addition to banks like HDFC Bank and ICICI Bank which continue to which we should continue to figure in the portfolio as a play on the retail as well as in the corporate exposure ICICI Bank more on the corporate exposure HDFC in the retail exposure in the private space what could turn out to be a multi baggers if economy were to revive in next 12 to uh, 18 months are some of the PSU banks because that's where all the problems have got accumulated the problem assets I mean and there are pressures uh, from on various fronts but with the government's initiatives to empower the banks and their their executives and their boards uh, giving them more freedom as well as conditions becoming more uh, conducive for a rate cut the bond book will start uh, they have uh, some of them have large excess SLRs so the, bond, the, the gains in the bond book, they'll be able to use them uh, uh, gainfully uh, as also improvement in economy will ensure that 12% uh, bad debts plus uh, uh, restructured assets uh, which are currently not yielding them any returns, some of them could start yielding them some returns. The uh, pressures on provisioning should reduce and all those stocks are available at a steep discount to their adjusted book values. So I think uh, there could be a play out there. If one needs to be patient, however, out there, you could possibly see a disappointment maybe in a quarter or so. But if you are taking a long-term view, which is what we advocate investors to look at, a 12 to 18 months view, then you should not leave out PSU banks. There you could play it two ways. You could have some of the larger and stronger PSU uh, allocation to some large and stronger PSU banks like SBI and BOB on one side. 
and then one could go down the curve and look at two other names like Bank of India and Union Bank as the other play. So that should in our opinion be a portfolio uh, which will ensure that you have proper hedging, domestic, foreign, cyclicals, investments and IT sort of you know which is mainly a play on the US and UK economy. So that a comprehensive portfolio can in our opinion outperform the benchmark indices handsomely if one takes a 12 to 18 months to 24 months view. It's a very exhaustive list and with uh, solid reasoning there. Rajay, thanks very much for that. Uh, I hope our uh, viewers have been listening and learning. Thank you for your time. Uh, great uh, talking you. to you. Appreciate it. Thank you so Take much. Quick break, it's yeah. always uh, enjoyable to be here. Thanks very much. Uh, we're going to take a quick break here. Revolutionizing the way buildings are constructed. We are